What is up guys, welcome back to another Destiny 2 build session, with today's showcase focusing on a off meta, but very fun build, that has some great applications tied to it, and when done correctly, it can spread its effects far and wide. This is a build that everyone, and I mean everyone has already done before, the moment the exotic and pairing was found out, and when combined with military void, made it even more hilariously OP if you managed to melee someone with subclass. I thought it would be nice to explore the build and show you some of the pros, cons and tips that the build has to offer, and what makes it viable in PvP if you're sick of the 120 and fail with the loadouts. I would say that in the right hands, this build can dominate players without giving them a chance to fight back because of how strong the territorial control the exotics have in play. Add in a user who knows their way around overwarp and it becomes very hard to counter even if you have the best loadout in game. At the same time, the build will have its downsides and the main weakness will come from his super, which sadly a lot of people are aware of and it's because of that one weakness there that the build isn't that common ground for many players to use. Either way, if you enjoy meta loadouts then this should be for you, and if you enjoy using items that have great synergy between each other, then you really do need to try this build out for yourself. So the subclass I've chosen is the Atonement of Fissions, and we'll be using the subclass mainly for the melee ability Atomic Breach that will allow you to one-shot players if touched by it. The subclass was at one point the most lethalist warlock classes in game when it was first introduced because of the super armor being really strong compared to other subclasses and its usage of handheld supernova. That when combined with Controverse Hold could one-shot players back to back and always get rewarded with a near four mile again. With the extra protection that Controverse provided and how long it lasted, you could one-shot players without them getting a chance to shoot first, and your super with high armor basically meant you can close a gap and still have enough health to take out a few players before they take you down. Now, this subclass isn't as strong as it used to be and it really does need a buff again to make the subclass viable in both PvE and PvP, especially a super which was utterly destroyed in the nerf, and in terms of damage resistance, and only so many players are able to use it as of now. As of now for example, we will be using the build for his melee ability that will allow us to one shot players caught by it, and this will be part due to the charged melee damage that will do roughly 100 base damage, and then when combined with the necrotic grip exotic, will eat away the last few drops of health and net you a easy kill. This is great as you can play within the ranges of form, so we can easily weaken a player via our weapon and then melee for a guaranteed kill. At the same time, we'll get ability energy back as well from a kill thanks to the dark matter perk that will activate in case everything fails, and we do still have our handheld supernova that can stop shotgun rushes from sliding in and the benefits will still greatly affect us no matter what. The great thing about this build is how you can actually use other subclass melees instead if you don't want to use Nova Warp, as the build itself is mainly the two Zoldex on hand. The reason I'm using Overwarp is to get you comfortable with using classes outside of your own zone and show you how easy it can become to build on something that's not very popular in today's climate. As for weapons, the only main weapon you need to have is the Thorn in your primary while everything else can be down to your choosing. This is great as this means your secondary can be whatever type of weapon you best feel comfortable in using, such as a shotgun, sidearm, sniper rifle or fusion and this will prepare you for whatever type of map you play without taking too much away from the original loadout. With Thorn as my primary, I can utilize the unique effect that the weapon has with the exotic gauntlets and prevent players from grouping up while also spreading its effects to others very quickly. The dot damage it does isn't strongest when done on its own, as simply body shotting a player with a weapon will do damage and take damage over time, but not enough to simply put pressure on them to run. This is why when I'm using the weapon, it's best if you aim for the head first and then follow up with two body shots. Depending on how much resilience they have left, it's going to either kill them or give them a tinge of health left that will force them to back off. If you're someone who's able to land your shots really great, using the fawn and setup will allow you to stop players from engaging you and even if they do survive and try to charge you your class abilities have the option to one-shot them in any way form, so it will be pretty hard to escape from you. Also, when you get a kill with said weapon, you also get an orb to drop that will provide a damage boost and a full magazine reload back to the fawn. Like I said, if you can master this weapon's kick and are able to land your shots, 
then the bonus damage is just another great add-on. For our secondary, I'm using the 7th Seraph CQC 12 shotgun with raw pull and quick draw. And this is a really great shotgun to use in PvP for its fast fire rate and very forgiving perk pull if you don't have Fell Winters or want something more forgiving in shots made. To me personally, I enjoy using this shotgun more than the Fell Winters simply because it's more forgiving to use and if you miss a shot, then your next shot should be easier and quicker to follow up without the delay. The role I have is great for taking down players fast if I catch them off guard and with quick draw on hand, the ready speed between switching to it will allow me to always have the upper hand in some situations if against multiple players at different angles. With Warpool attached, it won't allow me to take down the super user in one or two shots all the time, but it will injure them enough that I can actually melee kill them with my charged melee, and if I die in the process, the take damage and damage done before should be enough to kill said super user. I would recommend you do get a secondary with Warpool, as this pairs well with the build, and against super rumors, this can be handy as a great counter. For heavy, I've chosen to use the Tarantula Linear Fusion Rifle with Field Prep and Box Breathing. And I know this isn't something a lot of players would choose to use in the Crucible because of the better options available, but you're not going to be using your heavy that extensively throughout the build unless you get a chance to do so. For me, I enjoy using Linears all the way back from year 1, and the Tarantula was one of my favourite fusions to use for its great stats and smoothness when firing. Compared to other fusions that have been released, the Tarantula feels a lot more rewarding when you're landing your shots from distance, and I've had a great time in using it effectively as a way of sniping, even though I suck at sniping as a whole. If you plan to try these out, do try and get one that focuses on both range and stability as best as you can, as will allow your shots to feel more smooth on impact, and the range is a big one as compared to the fusion for the needle, that fusion barely has much range compared to the latter. This may explain why it doesn't feel that effective at long ranges that it should pretty much excel at. For the stats, we are going to be heavily investing in melee this time round, with grenades coming second. You want to ideally have the melee stat as high as possible for a faster cooldown because of how fast paced PvP is. And also, we won't be using certain mods such as Heavy Handed to help us, as this can be useful but very situational depending on maps, players, and where your sources for orbs of powers will be. Taking a look at strength, aiming for 80 for a 41 second cooldown or even 100 for a 32 second cooldown would be ideal for keeping your cooldown freely available at all times. Now as the build is only heavily investing in one stat, you don't need to be flexible in other areas as mods will cover these areas with ease. And at the same time, PvP is very fast paced so you want to make sure your abilities cooldowns are very quick for you to keep up with. Compared to PvE, we won't be taking it slow as these options are not available against actual players, so investing in certain stats for better survival makes the most sense. If you have the Radiant Light mod, then this plus 20 stat bonus to strength should really help you out in terms of balancing out what areas require what, without needing to sacrifice other important stats. From there, adding in mods such as Invigoration and Distribution will also help you out immensely for getting a faster mini cooldown through your play and that should be enough from there for the strength stat overall. Of course, this will vary from player to player, so a lot of finishing will need to be done. If you have the resources, I would also invest in the momentum transfer mod, as that can give you an extra cooldown bonus in melee via grenade damage. Handy if you want to build it quickly, but not directly confronting players. Recovery and resilience are your second most important stats and should always be at least 50 to 60 for both stats for extra protection and survival in PvP. Compared to PvE, having high resilience stat can increase the likelihood chance of surviving an extra shot that would have killed you before, while recovery will allow you to recover faster. So the higher the stat is, the faster you can get back in action again. With that also comes our grenades, and will play a pivotal role for locking down areas or stopping incoming players. At best, 60 should be the highest the stat should go as it won't play a huge part in the build except from stopping players and locking areas down, but it should just be enough that we can rely on it when the time comes. Now as we have covered the main 3 key areas that are heavily depict what the build needs and why, here are the rest of the mods that dictate how the build works behind the scenes. Head, we have Discipline and Hand Cannon Targeting mod, Arm, we have Recovery and High Energy Fire mod, 
In chest we have Discipline, unflinched hand cannon aim and charge with light mod. Leg we have Strength, Invigoration times 2 and Radiant Light mod. Bond we have Strength, Focus and Lens and Distribution mod. As a off meta build, you're going to be competing a lot against other players who will be using 120s and shotguns with greater range and damage than you have. On top of that, they are also going to be using perks that can increase their damage massively, making their shots 1 to 2 shots, which can be avoided if we play safe, but still unavoidable at best. However, with the build in mind, you have a great chance for countering such players as they will need to land a headshot for them to have the clear advantage against you. For us, this is the same but we can apply pressure to such players via the 4 and Necrotic Grip combo, as with this combo against generally anyone, makes it a lot more harder for them to engage as they will be constantly losing health no matter what. Whether we land a headshot or body shot, we will be able to drain their health over time and this we can use to pick off those that play aggressive, as not many players will want to back off when engaging in CQC. At the same time, we'll also gain a damage buff either from the kills we get or from the charge we light, which can allow us to pretty much two tap most players and then let the poison finish them off, which saves us ammo. On maps that are very small to play on, you will be able to get a lot of mileage out of the build because of its spreading effects. In fact, small maps or even 3v3 content is probably where you'll see the most of the build, as it's great for causing pressure for others, which you can utilize to push up with your team on. At the same time, small maps will also be a problem when up against shotgun apes, as they have the higher ground and closing the gap quickly. At the same time, small maps will also be a problem when up against shotgun apes as they have the higher ground and closing the gap quickly. For us, we can counter this thanks to the subclass melee and its range that can damage and push them back which will allow us breathing room for us to readjust and finish them off if need be or just let the poison slowly get to them. At the same time, I've also added in just to be safe the Focusing Lens mod that increases our light based attacks from those affected by stasis, so our kills will be guaranteed more often if they are affected by any sort of stasis. The only issue to build at best is its super which is ok to use and is still powerful nonetheless, but it lacks damage resistance and needs a buff around this area to make it easier to close the gap and catch players off with it. It doesn't need to be super strong, but just enough to where I can survive a shotgun blast or two and still have enough HP left to finish off set players from distance. My final verdict on the build is that to me is a fun off meta loadout to use in PvP, where it is easy to craft synchronization between abilities, weapons and perks, and can take you very far if you learn to master it, as it has everything you may have ever wanted from a poison focused build and has great counters against supers which will be a pain for a lot of players. It's rare to see certain Zotos work hand in hand like this, so it's with my recommendation that you do give it a try when you're looking for something new to try out. But don't expect yourself going on long streets with it, it does take a bit of time to get used to first before doing so. So if you enjoyed the video then please leave a like and sub and also follow me on Twitter to keep up to date with Destiny and Typhoon content if you do that type of stuff, link is down below. But once again, thanks for stopping by, I'll see you all in the next one.